Do me a favor, picture your favorite crypto app or exchange. Got it? Now I have five questions for you. Question number one, does your favorite app or exchange have fiat on and off ramps that do not charge you crazy fees? Question number two, does your app actually help you time your investments with machine learning and algorithms? Question number three, does your app or favorite exchange connect to multiple exchanges to get you best rates, best liquidity, but also mitigate the risk of a central failure of one single order book? Question number four, is your favorite app or exchange Swiss made, but also licensed and regulated in the EU so that you can feel 100% reassured, but also sleep well at night? Question number five, is your favorite app or exchange fully aligned with your principles and values, 100% community centric and not VC backed? So if your answer to any of these questions is a no, what are you waiting for? Download the Swissborg Wealth app, join the new era of wealth management and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites. The no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And tonight we have another mind blowing guest, Arena Caracao, the Polkadot ambassador and really cool person here today to give you another timeless interview. Thank you so much, Arena, for coming today. How are you doing? Thank you, Alex. Doing great. Thank you for having me. A pleasure to have you. I'm so excited. And Irina, you know, you have a really cool background and I've seen you involved in real estate and now Polkadot ambassador. Tell us about your big why, like what really fascinates you and what are you passionate about in this space? Well, so I'm an architect and an urban planner and I've worked in consultancy in sort of traditional real estate market for over 10 years. And then in 2016, just like everybody else, I heard about blockchain and read the books and I knew what Bitcoin is and, you know, but it was the market that wasn't really applicable for the real estate for me at the moment. But uh, at some point I began working on a project on digitalization of companies, of assets. And my business partner came up with an idea of doing um, STOs for uh, an oil refinery. And that's how we got into the space. And then we began you know, talking with the community, connecting with the um, professionals in STO. And a bit later we came across um, Smart City project. So it kind of came to me instead of me going to look for it. Um, and yeah, and then I came across Polkadot. I began building my portfolio. I began building my investment some time ago because before I got involved in all the urban project planning projects and I discovered some fascinating teams some fascinating projects began learning more did a course on INSEAD with Don Tapscott learned really what blockchain is how it helps us and that blew my mind because I've always wanted to find something exciting to work on. I didn't want to be a traditional architect that just builds buildings because there is much more to it. I know that the world needs a change and we need a new building environment. We need to have a better use of the spaces we already have, of understanding where we live and make our community more appealing. So blockchain seems to me that kind of tool that can help us, you know, instead of going to Mars and looking for a new planet to leave, make the one that we already have better and unlock the assets that we have and bring them to the site. Oh, very nicely put in. You know, Don Topscott came on the show. He was seated right there where your chair is. Incredible interview. But uh, you said so many important things right there, Irina. And I think, you know, really when it comes to Polkadot and not just this year, like obviously DeFi is one of the big topics, right? in 2020 but the third generation blockchains are also a massive topic and polka dot is is one of them that is really starting to get a lot of you know headlines and a lot of interest and hype and i'd love to hear from you just for the viewers out there to understand like because we have polka dot and we have kusama right uh, what are the differences why are these things happening if you can educate us a little bit more on this so that we can better understand the view that would be great yeah, so Polkadot is not just a hype, <laughs> it's actually a great community behind it. So it's not like any other crypto and we don't really like 
the talk around crypto in Polkadot yeah. because it is a solid project, it is a new blockchain, it is a bridge between other blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin with the new projects emerging in Polkadot. It is a communication, it is a transformation in space and a revolution in my opinion because I think that Dr. Gavin Wood uh, is the person who actually made blockchain survive as a project and made it applicable in the real world because if we don't have that bridge and parachains and scalability and fast transactions we would just have hyperledgers close community of banking and using you know blockchain inside of big corporations on one side and then all the developers creative enthusiasts they're building something ICOs and exciting projects on the other side public blockchains are governments, but how are the three going to communicate without that bridge, that project that Polkadot is bringing to the space? And when it comes to Kusama, so Kusama is a creative project, is chaos, as we call it, um, and it enables you to experiment. So if you're a startup and you have small funding, uh, or you just have a very raw idea, there you're looking for uh, developers to join you, you're looking to test for bugs and you know things that may go wrong if you put it on, on a real blockchain and you start building a serious project. So you can run all your tests, you can run all your experiments, and then once it is approved by the community, you can transfer it to the Polkadot system and make it real. And again, what is great about Polkadot is people supporting it. So we began ambassador program some time ago but uh, more and more people are joining and now we're over 200 ambassadors uh, from all kinds of backgrounds so you can be technical you can be a developer you can be a business person you can be a creative person we have a portal that's called Polkadot Pathways where we create content for YouTube graphic design there are bounties to solve translations to do so people whoever you know everybody is welcome to join the community, to contribute, to have their word in how they want to see this new space developing. So build exciting projects, bring ideas of what the new internet shall look like, how we shall use it, because it's such a fascinating space where we still do not have rules and regulations, right? It's not, nobody knows how it really works. Nobody can have one answer to any question everything is possible because we have ethereum we have smart contracts we have currencies we have supply chain on the blockchain so there are so many things that have technical um, technicalities that have business implications still a lot of people myself included right are who are not technical are trying to find a way to make blockchain really work for uh, for a real world and it's it's great to have creative minds contributing and you never know whether that would be a developer because we are now used to okay you, ethereum is created by a group of developers really tech people with the code with you know the the power of the code as, as we may call it but what if you have uh, a real world case scenario to solve the problem like uh, in the case of Apple, the, that company came to the space not with the idea that, oh, we're going to write a perfect product and we're going to write a perfect code and we're going to sell it to the people just because it's just because it's there and we decided on this product. Now they said, no, there is a problem and we want to solve that problem. So let's do right design something to solve the problem. So what I would personally like to see is us all bringing real world problems into that space uh, to solve them. To solve them, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And you know, like what you said makes really so much sense. You know, you talked about Dr. Gavin Wood. I think having this Kusama platform, Polkadot, 
plus the fact that he's a co-founder of Ethereum, there's so many layers of learning, right? And it's so cool that on top of learning from Ethereum, there's an extra platform that, you know, can test things and go wild because, you know, when I think about Kusama and really to me, it reminds me of Sony in the early 80s and uh, I'm a little bit older and so it's maybe not your generation, but in my young, in my youth, in my teenage years, you know, a Sony Walkman with the cassettes was the coolest thing on earth. Like Sony was as cool as Apple I had today, that one. right? Really? <laughs> yeah. Sony Walkman before even the Discman. And I remember I talked to one of the C-level people at Sony in the 2000s, so way later. So Sony was at the top at that time, kind of went a little bit down after that. And he and I asked him, like, why was Sony so successful at, in those days? And he said, because we gave carte blanche to the engineers. There was no fear for failure. They tested, they tried. And do you, do you think that is one of the recipes as well for Polkadot that will make it uh, a huge success in the future? It is one off, absolutely. Because when you can just, you know, enter the space and contribute, because if you bring value, you're always welcome. You will be always listened to. You can always have an initiative. And if you have a real thing, right, everybody will support you. Because it's a bit like, our new way of living in terms of giving stars to a good service, mm -hmm. giving rating for things that really work. So you really make sure that these are the things that the community needs. It's a bit like also with the um, proof of stake and voting process, right? Validators, nominators. So in order to become a validator, you need somebody to nominate, you need somebody to trust you. So that person also, and both of you need to make sure that you have trust and you also can deliver the work you've promised to deliver. So that is one big part. So yes, you need to be creative. Yes, you need to have the opportunity to express any idea and to have the space to test it and to be connected to the people who can help you with it. Because if you go to our forums, you can always find, you know, like brainstorming for idea, oh, let's build an NFT, let's build that project, let's build this project. And then you get connected with different developments from all over the globe. Because there's no limits. That's the amazing thing about blockchain and the internet and yeah, the community, so right? Cool. You, you can be in any place in the world and you can con world. connect to, to like-minded people. Yeah. And that was the idea behind it at the very beginning. Uh, but also, now there is this trust in the community and trust that you're going to deliver on your promises. It's what I see like a bit of Uber star and maybe in Netflix movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's maybe it has two sides of the coin. I don't, I wouldn't like to see it turning into governance of, you know, cause it's, it's a bit of a personality anyway. You need to be serious. You need to be reliable mm. to make your contribution. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So in, in terms of like Polkadot as well, like one thing that I noticed, like when I look at GitHub, I, you know, back in the days when we had the first generation blockchains, I love to look at the activity on GitHub because it's all transparent. It's all open for everyone to, to view. And I noticed that, that Gavin Wood is actually contributing a lot into Polkadot, which is to me a very, very positive sign because he's getting his hands dirty and he's getting really deeply involved. Is this a scenario where one could succeed and the other, you know, couldn't? Or could, could they both succeed in terms of Polkadot and Kusama? How do you see the future playing out for, for these two projects? Well, it, the two are staying there, in my opinion, because Kusama will always be there. It, um, initially, it's been viewed as a um, project where you would experiment and the Polkadot will run its experiments and then it could potentially close, but then it stayed there and actually the community saw that there is a lot going on and it became like a wild brother of Polkadot. Wild brother, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you can do any kind of things. So it is there to stay and Polkadot, of course, we have very serious applications, very serious companies building on Polkadot and it's the new internet, right? It's that element of Web 3.0 that has to be there, otherwise the rest uh, is not functioning the way we would like it to function. Tell us a little bit more about the Web 3.0. That sounds, you just hit on a really hot topic, right? That's also one of, on all the headlines. Tell us a little bit more about what this looks like, what it means. Yeah, so in principle, what the blockchain is about, value, delivering value on the chain. So real world assets are going to the blockchain. 
like the real estate tokens, right? We're putting real assets. Energy web token is managing the real the real world energy solutions that we can have in terms of reducing CO or CO2 impact. Uh, Robonomics is another exciting <coughs> project that I'm following. Um, they are bringing Internet of Things into the space of blockchain, so they are looking at the building and the sensors that smart building can have and how to control that on the blockchain. And there are many more applications to the, to the new Internet where we really want to see our information being traded in a fair way, like not like traditional social media that be manipulating your data and you never know where your data ends up. And we have new browsers that actually reward you back for using your data. So there would be many more applications of putting your house on the blockchain, uh, trading that, creating a token out of that. Um, another fascinating thing about Polkadot is that we have democracy and we have um, voting system, governance. Uh, so everybody can, teams can uh, take control over their own project, they can vote on their own project and all the people involved can vote as well. So it, it becomes more fair. It's not uh, in the hands of a selected a few group. stakeholders. Because yeah. usually what you see on other blockchains there are stakeholders yeah. anyway. You know the So everyone from the ecosystem of Polkadot will contribute to the votes of other projects as so well. So that that is also the, the proof of stake. Where you can use your tokens, you can use dot token to vote. So you can stake it there, a certain amount of tokens, and then there is a portal with projects. You can see it on Polkadot, and you can use your vote to support the project and to approve the project. That's fascinating. It makes a lot of sense, right? And you get more participation as well by doing it that way, right? Rather than, like you said, closed groups. So yeah, once people learn about the project and about the team, which is very important, right? If you're supporting someone, you want to make sure uh, that you share their vision and you share the vision of the project. So you have all this information on the web. We have an amazing information portal, which is Polkadot Wikipedia, Wiki. Polkadot Wiki, you can find all the information there. Uh, web3 Foundation is managing that. They are editing the content. They're constantly adding new content. Uh, you can find any kind of information on, in the open source. Uh, you can participate in substrate seminars. There are month weekly seminars where you can go join, learn life, how to code, how to build a blockchain. If you're a developer, you're not sure, you can learn Substrate, you can learn how to become a part of the, of the development community, how to get involved in Kusama projects. You will be always called to other teams uh, who are building blockchain, uh, you know, come and join. So it's, it's very open community. It's, it's all about sharing knowledge, experience, and, and being there, and, th and that's why it gained so much support. That's why it skyrocketed yeah. in the recent couple of weeks, because the community is growing. And that's and the most important, right? That's the most important thing, because we don't want, uh, like, DeFi. What is DeFi now? Everyone is, you know, talking about the yield farming, and, like, we saw what happened with the so-called food tokens, right? Someone just goes there, uses the space for... Uh, one-off project one smart contract one smart contract one thing and then disappears from the space so you really yeah. want to make sure that you're supporting the right team that is there to stay there is there to develop there is there to give value it makes a lot of sense you know like when i looked at the github like and I, when i go going through polka dot i also noticed like different you know um descriptions just of interoperability right and supporting blockchains that connect each other like you were talking about earlier the only thing I have in terms of concerns is because of Ethereum at the moment, you know, there are many issues, there are many limitations in terms of scalability, in terms of throughput, in terms of gas prices, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and I know Polkadot is not supposed to be a competitor to Ethereum, but could there be a scenario where, especially Gavin, knowing some engineers from Ethereum, where some people will leave Ethereum and just lose hope and then become, you know, Polkadot engineers and I know that's not the intent of Polkadot but could it be like kind of a dangerous competitor to Ethereum eventually? I actually see Polkadot and Ethereum as a complementary. As a complementary, yeah. 
because Ethereum is more heavyweight project, right? And already a lot of corporations are using it, and uh, ERC20 token is the most used yeah, one. Yeah, it's the standard, right? So I see these corporations staying on Ethereum, and then you can always build like, uh, actually Energy Web Token uses ERC20, but they have a parachain uh, with Polkadot. With Polkadot. So you can connect, you can build uh, complementary projects on those parachains. And yes, about transactions, of course, Polkadot doesn't have forking. So the prices of gas cannot fluctuate so much because the whole idea is to enable that flow of transactions and never create in the bottleneck. Um, but again, if you're using Ethereum for more corporate blockchains and then you want to connect it to something in another in public space blockchain, when, you know, it's a complementary project, you can always do that through a parachain. So I think we should be smart because I don't see Ethereum as, as a problem because it's a smart contract, right? And, it, and the point of Ethereum for being there is to have that smart contract. Smart contract, yeah. And the point of Polkadot is to have other things going on to, have, to enable these transactions of smart contracts faster. Mm. So they're more like best buddies than, than rivals. Should be. Should, Should be. be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens because no one, no one no can one predict. Knows, but right? obviously there is no intention inside, you know, oh, let's steal the engineers. And yeah, it's not it's it's an open community. And you I see a lot of people being involved in several same projects. And it's an open community, but a small community at the same time you end up bumping the same people all the yeah, time. Exactly. Like, yeah, it's yeah, a small yeah. world. That's exactly what it is. It's a small world. You know, people, it's like, yeah. So, but we are trying to build something for the humanity. We're trying to change the world. Uh, so great minds, they should work for good. To create a global ecosystem, so right? Let, let's believe that it's, we're here for a good cause. We're here to make things work, not to create a competition and to have you know, amazing projects. And I see Polkadot as something very different to, to what we had before. And now Ethereum 2.0, right? So let's see what that brings to the space. Let's see how they are going to solve the gas issue because it's been skyrocketing yeah, in the past crazy. few yeah, weeks. Exactly. And that's a, that's a big problem because, you know, it's supposed to be decentralized, like you said, Web 3.0, where financial services become accessible to all, but because the gas fees are too old, it's, it's very exclusive, right? Only the people with a lot of money can actually play with yield farming and stuff like that and DeFi projects. So. Well, you see, yield farming is, as Vitalik said, is a dangerous thing. Mm. He wouldn't in, you know, participate in it. And I support that because how can you guarantee that one of the pieces of the puzzle is not fake one, doesn't have any bug in it. You know, you've Faulty seen what, what happened right. to, to Yam. Yeah, Boom. Yam or, yeah. Boom. yeah how, how can you prevent that from happening? And then one, if one piece of the puzzle doesn't work, then you basically lose all your investment on the way. Mm. So it's, it's a dangerous game to play. It's hard to say why we began that game from the first place, but let's see. Let's see. I'm staying away. <laughs> I'm staying away, you know. I'm very conservative You're in very that conservative, respect. Yeah. yeah. I guess as people test first and then once here it's confirmed. But you just mentioned a little bit earlier about the applications, you know, or, and projects that are working with Polkadot. Because, you know, a lot of the chains are scalable, they have good throughput or they have all the sexy features, but don't really have use cases or adoption, right? And that's, I think, what Ethereum did really well. So many people build on top of Ethereum. Uh, are we already seeing, like you mentioned, smart cities? What are the kind of projects that, are, that we're seeing that are already being built on Polkadot that show that there is a use case? Well, you see, as I mentioned, Robonomics, the Robonomics. Internet of Things. Yeah. So the, the easiest thing to put on the blockchain, and we should be putting on blockchain in terms of the real world, is connecting all the sensors, all the, the things sensors. that we can control. Mm -hmm. um, all sort of transactions that should be transparent, all sort of government governance, so land policy. Yeah. Uh, right. So we can exchange. How can we exchange land policies of different countries and land data? If you are an investor in China and you want to invest in the UK, yeah, you need to request the data, which is the safest way to transfer it through the blockchain. But to communicate one private blockchain of one government with another one to exchange that data, you need to enable um, a link in the middle. 
which mm. polka dot can be a project of solely that land management. Mm. Do you see this a real estate with polka dot is one of the interesting use cases? Well, this is what we are trying to develop in my company. We're trying to develop uh, a token that will enable us to resolve the issue of STOs being liquid. Yeah. And the whole process, because we still see that uh, to create an STO is is a complex process. Yeah. And if you're a small investor or if you're somebody, you're an individual that wants to start your portfolio of investment and you do not have you know, accreditation or enough capital, how would you do that? How do we allow this democracy, yeah. this, you know, um, inclusivity inclusivity yeah so that is that is something to still solve and what we're working on it's a great point and you know this security tokens that was the the original goal right it was kind of like you know we can create a system of securities that is borderless you know anyone has the same you know uh, opportunity despite where you live any jurisdiction right it's just open system fair and accessible to, to everyone right but it, is that really going to happen someday? Because it seems like even the EU, we can't even keep the EU together, right? So how would we keep a world together in terms of securities and security tokens? Is there still a future for that? Or is it not going to be as exciting as the whole hype that we had in maybe 2018, 2019? Well, you see, uh, at the beginning, I saw it very raw. And there was a lot of objection to it. And a lot of skepticism around gov governments yeah, actually allowing... Exactly the open openness of the information but georgia did it georgia has put their uh, registered land uh, register in the blockchain uk is working on it and i really believe that you know this technology is going to change the world is going to create that revolution we all need because with the recent pandemia story you know people are rethinking the way we live the openness, the access, inclusivity, access to information, all these revolutionary movements that are happening. I think we're all a little bit tired. Yeah, absolutely. We all want a change. So we have to vote for an open society, for inclusivity, for opportunities for everybody. And blockchain is that tool that gives you the opportunity. No matter where you are, no matter your income, yes, it, it, it does require you to have a laptop to have some basic knowledge because we were discussing ux design yeah right how can you read the interface how can you deal with transactions what, what is the most difficult thing there the transaction itself the use of exchanges the use of metamask you know it, it's not um, still accessible for people of a certain age people that are not so proficient in using computers but what I've noticed is Facebook, for instance, who introduced Libra currency lately, has changed its uh, interface. Do you find it similar to things you see on blockchain? Yeah, yeah, I definitely. find it very similar because yeah. it's a white background, it's, it's different kind of font, everything's kind of messy. If you open any portal that's built on the blockchain where developers talk, like the development chat, find pretty similar yeah. features there so i think that there is an idea behind it to, to do that mass adoption because the average user of facebook is maybe our parents generation because younger people they're already there they already know everything about exchanges and do youtube channels about that so they know more than anybody else they don't need to be taught they grab everything pretty quickly uh, but all the generation need, needs to be educated and then we have people doing UX design improving because if you now look at the blockchain websites you see that they improved a lot in terms of graphics in terms yeah, of absolutely. Um, the way you read things you how quickly you can understand which button to press and not to send your money out of space because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the feeling that's the feeling I got when I first opened the exchange like Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is really complicated in the beginning. And it, a lot of people say that user experience is the UX is the ultimate, you know, kryptonite, you know, to, to, to break through in order to really reach mass adoption. Is that, is that the final step or not the final step, but the next step that we really need to, to focus on? Dollar is going digital. Yeah. Yuan is going digital. Yeah. Other currencies are going to follow. We have 
no way back, I think. And we're getting stable coins everywhere, Swiss franc stable coin, Turkish lira stable coin. You know, when the government adopts the technology, it is, it is the body and the, the mechanism to enable the change globally. And now with this economic situation that we have, the only answer, in my opinion, is DeFi. Mm. The only answer we have there, how we can balance and manage and find other ways out. But it's, it's been necessary change for a while, I think, anyway. I'm so looking forward to seeing the developments with Polkadot and Kasama, and I think you're involved in a very exciting project. Uh, and uh, really look forward to the, the roadmap coming ahead. So Irina, tell us like if we want to follow you, if we want to connect with you, get to know you, like are you more active on Twitter these days, on LinkedIn? What is the, the best? I'm on LinkedIn. I actually see that there is a lot of uh, dialogue going on on LinkedIn. I also have Twitter, uh, Telegram. Telegram. We also have Polkadot Telegram, so please get involved. Definitely. <laughs> Polkadot Kusama. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, guys. If you liked the content here, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, blast that bell notification. We'll put all the information in the comment box below and the description box as well. So please follow Polkadot Kasama. These are really interesting projects that have a very promising future. And don't forget also that we premiere every Wednesday, 8 o'clock UK time at a PC near you. See you next week, guys. Take care.